Hi everyone, uh, good evening and welcome to tonight's webinar. It's titled Let's Connect, How to Overcome Loneliness and that's brought to you by Mind and Bexley. My name is Brett Petersma and I am the Digital Health Project Coordinator at Mind and Bexley. As you're aware, it's Mental Health Awareness Week and uh, the theme this year is loneliness. Now, I think loneliness is something we've all experienced and uh, thankfully um, it's something that as a community and as a society we're just getting much better talking about and that's exactly what we're going to do tonight. We have a lovely lineup of speakers. Uh, first up we have Laura Burke, our training and community lead. She's going to be talking about how to build connections. Uh, following that, we've got senior Sue White from our uh, recovery college, who uh, is talking about overcoming isolation with the help of recovery college. And finally, we have the lovely Nora Malik, who is going to talk to us about getting connected with Community Connect. If we've got a little bit of time afterwards, we'd love to uh, answer some questions. So feel free to submit uh, in the chat function. Uh, and if, if we don't have time, we will try and get back to you later, um, emails, etc. Before we crack on, I'd just like to highlight some housekeeping points. Uh, this event is being recorded, but audience members cannot be heard and cannot be seen. A video of the event will be shared on our YouTube channel. So if you find it useful and you think it might use, be useful for others, please do just share away. Um, as I said, if you have any questions, the chat box is there. We would love to hear any questions, um, any thoughts, any ideas, any topics and feedback for next time. So don't forget to pop that in. Um, do keep in mind, this is a live event. So things do can and do go wrong. Just bear with us. We will sort things out as quickly as we can. And finally, just to remind you, this event is for information purposes only. If you need to speak to someone today, please call Samaritans on 116-123 or get hold of your GP. So without further ado, um, I would like to pass over to the lovely Laura Burke. Over to you, Laura. Hello. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining our talk today. Um, so I'm just going to open up the trainer for today. So hopefully you can see Overcoming Loneliness webinar. I'm getting, I'm getting nods, so that's a good sign. So I'm in the right place and I've got the right talk on, so that's a good start. So welcome. Thank you very much for coming on today for Mental Health Awareness Week. As Brett has mentioned, it is Mental Health Awareness Week and the theme this week is actually loneliness. We have gone through something that nobody could have anticipated lockdown, COVID, being told we could only go out for one hour a day. Um, and, and a lot of people have felt incredibly isolated. But just because lockdown's over, that doesn't mean that nobody feels isolated anymore. Um, people feel very much isolated. So this talk today, I hopefully want to get across how, in fact, you can kind of tackle loneliness. What are the steps you can take? And hopefully we give you some resources today about where to go moving forward. So within this workshop, we are going to talk about what exactly loneliness is. We are going to talk about what makes us lonely. We are going to look at the relationship between loneliness and mental health. And then we are going to look at how to overcome loneliness. So let's get going. So what is loneliness? So when we think about loneliness, we are thinking about a stage in our life where we might feel that we aren't getting enough social contact. So there is an element of us that doesn't feel that we're very connected with the people around us for a variety of reasons. It might be that what we feel we need has just not been met and that leaves us feeling quite lonely and that might feel quite empty for a lot of people. We all feel lonely from time to time. It's completely normal to feel lonely. Um, and feelings of loneliness are very personal. So everyone's experience of loneliness can be different. You know, someone might feel lonely after one day of no social contact. Some people might feel lonely after a week. Some people might feel lonely after an hour. It really does depend on the person and what they are experiencing. Isolation, you know, staying away from people 
can of course be a factor but it's not the only one when it comes to loneliness you can feel lonely in a room full of people you can be perfectly happy you can be thankful um, but sometimes you can still feel really alone and that is something that a lot of people really struggle with because you know they might say to themselves I've got family I've got friends I've got people around me but yet I still have this loneliness what is that what is going on for me so hopefully through this presentation we'll shed a little bit of light on that um, loneliness may mean you do not feel understood or cared for by the people around you so as I said previously going back to that social contact isn't met for you there's something going on for you where you're needing more, you're needing further connection from the people around you. And because you don't have that, you feel kind of um, out of sorts, really. So is loneliness a mental health problem? Feeling lonely isn't a mental health problem, but the two are very closely linked. And I'll tell you why. Because when you can have a mental health problem, this can increase your feelings of loneliness. And the reason that might be is you might not feel understood you might not feel that you can speak about your mental health issues. You might feel isolated because of your mental health. For instance, if somebody has got social anxiety or has a social phobia, they are going to feel incredibly isolated, aren't they? Because they aren't able to, to meet lots of people or maybe leave the house. And understandably, that causes them to feel isolated, alone, um, and can leave them feel that their needs are not met. Um, feeling lonely can also have a negative impact on our mental health. Um, some research suggests that it has an increased risk of certain mental health issues, in particular anxiety and low mood, low mood being the more particular uh, issue here. And the reason that is as well is because when we're feeling lonely, it can feel difficult to pick ourselves up. We then start to ruminate and feel that there's something wrong with us. Um, you know, people don't like you. There's a reason that you don't have friends. And, and before you know it, your, your thought patterns can start to unravel that can make you feel a little bit unwell. So there's the relationship between loneliness and mental health. What do we think makes us lonely then? Is it just, you know, the fact that we're isolated? But is there other reasons why we can feel lonely? So loneliness can have many causes. It can be you've had a, the end of a relationship reason, recently that has caused you to feel alone. You've been used to a certain person being around you, you know, a certain kind of dynamic that brings. And because that's ended, that can make you feel really alone. If you've changed schools or jobs or education or college um, or you've moved streets even, you can feel lonely because the relationships that you had around you that were quite familiar are no more at the minute and, and you feel new and where you feel new you can feel isolated and you can feel anxious within that and um, if you quit a job or lose a job understandably that can make you feel lonely if we're going into work every day and we are seeing people regularly we build connection we build relationships um, some people have a good rant in work. Some people have a good moan. Some people will, you know, talk to their colleagues about what's going on at home. And they all have that, that voice, that space that we all need. Um, if you've moved to a new city, that can be incredibly hard. You know, even if, as I said, if you move down the street, just go into a new scenario can feel overwhelming. If you're living alone for the first time, all of these new experiences can cause you to feel, oh, I'm on my own, I don't really know what to do with myself. I need to go out, I need to be out all the time. If you are um, not having close others around you to celebrate special occasions with, so, um, you know, close people around you, whatever that might be, family, friends, colleagues, whoever that might be. And if you don't have them around you to celebrate certain milestones in your life, that can feel difficult and that can lead to feelings of loneliness. It's especially important to be aware of how you are feeling in these instances and take extra steps to prevent loneliness. As I said to you, loneliness is something that can increase the likelihood of a mental health issue. So if you are able to kind of tackle or, or you know, increase ways to make you feel less lonely, that's always going to be a good thing for you overall. So misconceptions of loneliness. Um, I don't know who thinks this, actually, but I believe it's important to share. Loneliness is a sign of weakness. 
I've never heard that one before, but I thought I'd add it in because it, I have seen it in different places. So obviously people feel that way. I def it definitely isn't a sign of weakness to feel lonely, is it? I think it's it's a strength. You want to be around others. What's wrong with that? Um, immaturity. I found that one interesting as well. Pe people might argue that it's immature to be lonely. Definitely don't agree with that either. Um, there's something wrong with me if I'm lonely. Definitely not. We all have feelings of loneliness. That would mean that every single person, there's something wrong with them. Uh, so how can that be? I'm the only one who feels this way. We know that that is uh, completely untrue. There are lots of people that feel incredibly lonely and it could be people that have lots of friendships and lots of family, but still feel like the loneliest person on earth. Um, no one wants to be around me. I wonder if that's an assumption or a fact, because actually um, that is an assumption. You know, if we asked every person around us if they want to be around you, I, I, I bet they'd say something different. Um, loneliness only affects older people. This is a massive misconception, huge. Um, and it's really interesting, actually, because there's a lot of befriending services with the older adults and there has been for many years however what you see now is befriending ad, uh, befriending services for any age and it's really really important that that has come about because it isn't just older people that are lonely it's everyone of all different ages you can be lonely in secondary school in primary school you can feel lonely um you know when you're out and about you know when you've moved cities you can feel lonely at at many different stages of your life. It really isn't consistently with age. Um, as it says there, studies have indicated that loneliness does not affect only one particular age group. It doesn't. And actually from COVID and the lockdown, what we're seeing is there is a high proportion of young people that are incredibly isolated and alone. So that just shows you that it's, it really isn't just older adults. Um, but all age groups are vulnerable to experiencing loneliness. So there's not a real um, age group here that would be more affected than another. It, it's a feeling that we have. And it's a feeling that, that may take over based on life experiences or what's happening to us at the time. So loneliness statistics. This is quite long, but I'm going to break it down for you. Um, British Red Cross in 2016 uh, did a variety of studies and looked at lockdowns, um, social distancing and restrictions on travel and gatherings. Um, and some groups of people have reported high rates of loneliness and poorer well-being in recent months. Um, levels of loneliness in Great Britain have increased since spring 2020. In April 2020, 5% of people, approximately 2.6 million adults, said that they have felt lonely often or always. <clears throat> that is a high proportion of people. Um, apologies, I've, I believe the year at the top of that is slightly wrong, um, but we're working with it, we're working with it. In February 2020, this percentage had increased to 7.2%, so it rose by approximately 3.7 million adults. And I'm sure that we're not really surprised about that because we had lockdowns and we were isolated and we didn't have each other around us and jobs changed and a lot of jobs stayed at home, which then meant that a lot of people felt incredibly lonely. Areas with a higher concentration of young people, this is interesting, aged 16 to 24, and areas of higher rates of unemployment tend to have higher rates of loneliness. There is lots of research to say that young people, but also those out of employment, are incredibly lonely. You know, we usually work for 80% of our life. So if we don't have that routine, we can be impacted. Um, the odds of people who said they had no one to talk to um, were almost 10 times greater than those who did have someone to talk to, uh, to feel lonely. So that just shows you the real impact that loneliness and experiences can have on people. Respondents who said they felt very uncomfortable leaving the house were also more likely to report lockdown loneliness compared with those who felt very comfortable leaving the house. So that's that's really telling that, isn't it? That's really highlighting that those that are feeling lonely find it even more difficult to leave the house, perhaps to make connections, perhaps to put themselves out there. And that might be for a variety of reasons. The study does continue and it does highlight that individuals with a mental health condition or who have a poorer general health generally were also more likely to be lonely. So 
mental health and general physical health can act as a little bit of a barrier. Loneliness also showed a strong relationship with well-being. Um, those who were lonely had much lower satisfaction with life than those who were not lonely. So it's really highlighting how loneliness can affect our general mental health. Um, 44% of those with a mental illness were lonely, while just 12% of those without an illness were lonely. And individuals who were married or in a civil partnership were less likely to be lonely than those who were single, separated, divorced or widowed. So it's highlighting the more people that are within the household, typically the less lonely that somebody would feel. But it does definitely depend on the relationship, doesn't it? And what you're getting from that relationship. And if your needs are not met in that relationship, it's going to lead to loneliness. So I just wanted to share that. I thought that was quite an interesting study um, and one that really makes us think about loneliness and, and the effects it can have on us. So now I'm going to get in, into the crux of it, really, the ways to overcome loneliness and, and what are the things you can do to help yourself through this difficult time. So first off, it's really important to take it slow. You know, if you felt lonely for a really long time, um, it might be terrifying for you to think about leaving the house, for instance, or meeting new people or opening up to somebody for the first time. But what I would say is don't rush it. Take things at your own pace. Maybe there's a particular goal you have. Maybe you want to come to a recovery college face to face group, but you haven't spoke to people in a really long time or you haven't left the house in a really long time so maybe the first stage for you is just leaving the house going to the end of your road coming back then going a bit further then it might be looking on our website then it might be signing up to our signing in our referral form and it's these little stages that will feel achievable and won't feel overwhelming which then in turn means that the goal that you want you will get there you know, if I said to somebody who's not left house, right, come and see me tomorrow. We're going to be with 50 people. You know, it's going to be loud. Let's do it. Come and see me. It's not going to happen, is it? Because it's too overwhelming. So take yourself, take it at a stage that feels comfortable. Um, simply knowing as well that other people are there may be enough for you to help with some feelings of loneliness. However, it may cause a lot of fear. But what I would say, if this is you and you want to do something, when you do reach out to Recovery College, let us know about this. Maybe there's something we can help with. Maybe we can make this easier. You are definitely not the first person that feels like this. And unfortunately, you will not be the last. So there's lots of different things we can do to make things a bit easier. You know, and however we can do that, we can speak to you on a one to one basis. So try and take it slow and break it down for yourself. Next, making new connections. I think is an obvious one, isn't it? If you're feeling lonely and you don't feel great, um, the, the best thing to do is to make new connections. But how hard is that? That's quite tough, isn't it? To just make new connections because I, I believe if it was that easy, everyone that would felt lonely would have done that already. You know, they would have gone out and done it, but it doesn't feel as easy as that sometimes. And I do really recognize that. But if you are feeling lonely because of lack of satisfying social contact, you could try to meet more or different people. And there's a variety of ways that you can do that. You could try joining something that you're really interested in. You could try doing a class or a group that isn't specifically focused on just social interaction. You know, it could be something that you're, it's a task and you're getting involved in. So like woodwork, knitting, um, coloring, art group, something where there's a task around it. It's not just a group where you all go and chat. You know, it's something where you can go, you can focus on an activity, you, you talk a little bit, you keep to yourself, and then you build yourself up to, to mix in with the group. That's absolutely fine. We have people in a variety of groups that do that, and that's absolutely okay, because they're getting to that stage, you know, and it's important not to rush that. If you are able to and you feel confident to, volunteering is a really great way to meet, meet people. And actually, when we feel lonely, when we help others, this can really improve our mental health because there's something inside us that when we give to others, it makes us feel really good, which then makes us feel that we can go to this class or it might give us that confidence to push forward. If you are thinking, I couldn't think of anything worse, go into a group, um, you know, it's very isolating, you know, don't make me do this. Um, why not join an online group? 
you know, or an online community. You know, if you're on Facebook, for instance, and you're interested in horses, why not join a horse group? Or um, I don't know if you're interested in, I'm trying to think of a show now. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Why not join a fan page and start to make connections on there and share what you like about the show and, you know, comment below, you know, what people have wrote. And that's a way to build connection. And that's a great way. You know, I think that's a real great thing about social media is that we can make great connections and you can get that satisfaction from it. That might be the start. Um, I liked this. It's on the National Mind website. Be brave and reach out to someone. It doesn't have to be face to face. You could share a post on social media. So this is what somebody put who was feeling incredibly isolated. Um, But it's hard, right? It's hard to reach out. We don't know where to start. You know, it might be that you you write something down. It might be that you you make yourself a little plan of of action of how you're going to do that. Um, It might be you talk to someone around you and say, I don't feel like myself lately. I think I need to get out more. Or um, is there something we could do together? You know, it might be something like that as as a way to introduce your feelings of loneliness. Um, You could even say, I really don't like being on my own. You know, when I'm at home, I don't I really don't like it. I find it really difficult. And then you can you can listen to what people around you might say. Might they might have some great ideas for you. Next, try not to compare yourself to others. On social media, we see perfect lives, don't we, all the time. We see people with families having a great time, people with lots of friends, uh, you know, people in big places with lots of people, parties, whatever it might be. And that can feel really isolating when you're looking on and you're not there and you don't have them friendships, perhaps, or you don't have them big circle of friends. Um, But what you've got to remember is, once again, just because people have got lots of people around them doesn't mean they're not lonely. But also, when we compare ourselves on social media, we are always the ones that are without. We're without this. We're without that. We're not good enough. We don't have enough money. We're not pretty enough, whatever it might be. And it can feel us feeling very sad, to be honest. It can make us feel really without, can't it? So when you are looking on social media and you're flicking through and you're on a scroll mission, because we all do that, we just scroll and scroll, please remember that you only see a snapshot of somebody's life. You don't know what's going in anyone's life. The only life you really know about is your own. So the next time that you do that and you compare, it's very, very biased because you're looking at you and you know everything about you and you see one picture and you go, right, I've got, you know, my life's awful, you know, my life's not great, I've got no one, no one loves me, etc, etc, and we go off on a tangent, so just remember, bring yourself back, pull back, and say to myself, I do not know what this person's life is like, I only know my own, if social media is impacting you, and it is making you feel more lonely than connected, come away from it, put your phone in a different room, turn it off, um sit on it if you have to whatever you've got to do do what you've got to do to make yourself feel a little bit better um if you've got to take time out of social media it's not going to harm you there is no research to say that being off social media harms you but there is a lot of research to say that social media can harm people um so that's something to think about as well so do be mindful of that and if you're noticing your mood really dipping after social media um then that's an indication that you might need to come away from it. And you might have to implement good social connection, you know, calling a friend, texting somebody, going on an online community, whatever you need to do and whatever enjoyment you get from an activity. So now I'm going to go through, oh, sorry, I was jumping ahead here. Next one, looking after yourself. This is really, really important because when you feel lonely, your well-being can be highly impacted and it can make you feel stressed, upset, sad, lonely, anxious, all of them feelings. And in, when you look after yourself, the better that can make you feel. What we don't want is you to feel incredibly lonely, then, then that impacts on your mood and then that impacts on your mental health and it prevents you doing the things you need, you need to do to make yourself feel good. We all need to feel good. So think about how some of the following are affecting how you feel and whether you can do anything to change them. Number one, sleep. Are you getting enough sleep right now? That's really important. Are you waking up in the middle of the night? Are you exhausted in the middle of the day? 
because all of these things are going to impact on you. If you're not sleeping, I don't know about you, but if I don't get a good night's sleep, I am grouchy and I am irritable and I'm hungrier for some reason. And it's just, it's not a good day to be around me, if I'm honest, when, when I'm tired. So that's a little tip. <laughs> um, diet. Are you eating well for yourself? Are you giving your body the fuel that it needs? Are you giving it vegetables and fruits and good things? Or are you giving it, you know, fatty foods and, and high, high things high in caffeine and lots of sugary foods? We know that diet can have an impact on your mental health because what goes up comes down. If you have sugar and you get a temporary rush, you will get a high, but then you'll get a low and you'll crash and you'll be more tired and lethargic and moody. Um, physical activity. Who is doing enough activity at the moment? If not, we need to get you out there a little bit because we know that when we move a little bit, well, when we move a bit, we sweat a bit and then we start to feel good. Probably not the sweating bit, but it's the actual fact of moving. So we, when you move, your body's like, what's going on? What's going on? And then it starts to send signals to your brain and it releases something called endorphins, which are basically your happy chemicals. They're basically your free drugs. You don't need to go and get anything. They're in, they're in you already. You only need to access them by exercising. So you can do that in a variety of ways. You can do a Zumba class, a YouTube video, yoga. You can run up and down the stairs for 10 minutes. You can get off the bus a few stops earlier. There are lots of ways that you can get in activity. If you have quite a sedentary lifestyle, you're, you know, you're sitting down a lot, um, you know, trying to do things on your lunch break. You could do squats by your desk. Um, you could do, you could put on a little 15 minute exercise video. There is always ways to exercise. Not, last few ones, spending time outside. Um, really good for us being outside. I don't know about you, but when I get out of the house, I, I feel different already. It's nice to see new things. I like seeing nature. And there's a lot of research to say that when we are around nature, our mental health improves. It's something about us being around nature, being back to our roots. Um, it can aid our well-being. So get out on a forest walk or a walk around you or, you know, just being outside in the garden and your front garden or wherever you are. Um, spending time outside can be helpful, especially when it's a nice day. Spending time with animals as well. I think this is a really important one. Someone told me before, and I really like this, that the love that you receive from animals is really uncomplicated. They just love you and that's it. You know, there's no hidden agenda. There's no, you know, I need to love you for this. It's just they love you and they want to be around you. And they're always excited when you come home, you know, and how lovely is that? So spend time with your animals if you're feeling lonely, you know, give them a little squeeze or put them on your lap, whatever you've got to do to have that connection. Because a lot of people get a lot of connections from animals. So further tips to overcome loneliness, remind yourself that your loneliness will not last forever. You're not always going to stay in this same state of feeling without and feeling like you're lacking in social connection. If you can, put yourself in new situations where you will meet new people. And I'm going to be honest with you, in order to not feel lonely, you are going to need to come out of your comfort zone even a little bit, just a little bit. If you can give me like 1%, that's a start. And then once you've done 1%, We'll probably push you to two. So you are going to need to come out of your conversation a little bit to get to where you want to be and get that connection. Um, join an activity that interests you, as I've mentioned, because doing something that is, you're passionate about will be the starting point. And then the connections that you get from other people around you is the secondary gain. You could also learn how to develop your social skills. If you actually feel that I'm not very good at communicating with people, why don't you practice? Why don't you look on YouTube about different uh, social inter interactions or, or on TV when you see people interact with each other? Why don't you practice that? You know, if I was going to a, a, a group that I was nervous for, I'd practice. I'd think about what I'd want to say. I'd think about how I'd greet people. I'd think about would I sit away from people? Am I going to sit next to them? Um, because if I do that, I feel a bit more prepared. And then if I feel prepared, I feel more comfortable because I've already set what I want to do and what I want to achieve. Keep things in your environment that you can enjoy. So if you are feeling lonely right now and, and right now you're not like, I want to get out the door, I want to make all these connections, I'm not there yet, 
I understand that completely. So keep things around you that you enjoy. So, you know, that might be books, that might be arts supplies, that might be games, whatever it might be. But, but fill up your time with things that you enjoy. You could watch a movie, you could go for a walk, you could pet an animal. I realise this is a bit repetitive, apologies, but I think the pet and animals are, is a big thing. Um, call someone you know or Samaritans for a chat. You know, Samaritans are there, they're highly trained uh, volunteers and they are specifically there to listen to you. That's their role. They are there to listen to you and speak to you. And take part in an activity that you like as well. I re sorry, I'm very repetitive on this training. I do apologise, but... That is important. We need to get you out there. So if you can just think about one thing that you are really passionate about and one activity where you can push yourself out there, um, then that would be a really, really good start. So that is the end of my workshop. I hope it's been helpful. If you've got any questions, um, please um, ask us on the question and answer tab. Thank you very much. I'll pass you back to Brett. That's great. Thank you so much, Laura. And um, I have a ridiculous dog that I spend lots of time cuddling and he certainly helps me get through some of those tricky, tricky times. But enough of that, <laughs> my ridiculous dog. Um, Sue, we are looking forward to finding out all about Recovery College. Tell us what you got in store for us. Apollo. Hi everyone. Um, what can I say about Recovery College? All good things, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> to combat loneliness, you couldn't beat it. Um, you have to, it's tailor-made to whatever your needs are, whatever you require, whether it's yoga maybe, or some mindfulness, some guided mindfulness. Uh, it can be open spaces. Maybe some of you would really love to attend an open space. We have a beautiful garden. We have a wonderful allotment. And some people say, oh, I can't. I've got a bad back. Mm -mm, no excuses. We have raised beds to certainly so you can adapt to whatever you need and whatever suits you. It could be a course. It could be a workshop. We have a music uh, for fun workshop. We have Stitch the Mind. We have men's group, photography for fun. The list is endless. There's no excuse to isolate yourself. Please don't. It's not a nice place to be. It's not a safe place to be, actually. Enjoy, start to enjoy life, be around people. And the Recovery College is a great place for that. And it accommodates, and it actually accommodates face-to-face -face groups so if you want to be around people after lockdown um, we certainly can can provide that in recovery college if you are not quite sure about that and want to do um, or attend workshops and courses online or groups including mindfulness including yoga including pilates um, lots and lots of you know um, I really can't speak highly of the Recovery College timetable. You, and please don't take my word. It's so easy to access. Come on to the Mind in Bexley website. Um, you know, just type in Mind in Bexley. Up will, up, it will come straight up. Then click on Recovery College, uh, which will take you straight to the face page. On that page, if you scroll down, you can open the timetable, first of all, which will give you a little feel for what you need for you, because it is all about you. It's about you choosing what you need to aid your recovery and to keep you well. So let's look at, you know, let's open the timetable and have a look. Once you've done that and you've chose whatever you feel you need for you, then please scroll down that same page on that website because on there you will see a self-referral form it's been made so easy um even i can do it so that's you know everyone will be able to do it if you all you do is click on the form you complete personal details your name first last name you can even have someone helping you do it if you can't you know if you can't manage it yourself please ask someone else to support you a family member um, a cousin, a neighbour, anybody. 
complete the rest, your address, your personal details, your postcode. Um, you then give us permission to, to check it all. And then as you come down, you scroll what services you require. So what do you require? It could be welfare rights assistance. Maybe you need some support with your, your benefits. Um, you'll complete whether you're in employment or not in employment. You're just giving us an over, overall view of what you need for you. It's so easy, it's a tick box. And when you get to the bottom of the form, you'll see a little box that you complete. You can enter your GP's name. You can specify if there's a particular need you need for you, please specify it so that we're aware of that. And then when you get right to the bottom of the form, after you've filled in that and you've chose what you want to do, you literally just press submit. There we are, click. That form then comes straight to us. It comes straight into Recovery College and we're able then to process it. And then you will be allocated your own caseworker that will give you a call, that will update you and let you know and talk to you about the services you've chose about how to access them. You'll be sent links for the case, you know, for the workshops, sorry, and for all the courses, some of the activities you'll be sent links to, so you can just click on and attend them when a need, you, when a need they're on. But please, one thing, if you don't take anything from this evening, take that you don't need to be alone. You don't need to be isolated. It's certainly not good for your mental health. Um, and the staff in Recovery College are waiting to support you to get back to where you need to be. So, and it, and it is almost like taking a leap of faith. Choose whatever you feel you need to choose. What, you know, there's nothing to lose, nothing, except you're going to feel better. I can guarantee you, you will definitely feel better and you'll feel less isolated. And then as your time goes on, you'll choose more and more. I mean, I would suggest really for people that, you know, for clients just coming into us, please don't overdo the choice. Don't set yourself up to fail. It doesn't work. Choose something that you really would like to try. Maybe one or two things you'd like to try so that you don't feel that you have only got one choice and have to go into one thing and you might not like it. So you can always go back. You know, we can always add you on to more things. You can always go onto the website and redo that yourself as you go along and feel better. Um, but I'll guarantee you, the only thing you're not going to feel is isolated. Thank you, Sue. That was really great to hear about all the amazing things you do. And I know we have some really, really popular groups. The art group has, I think, a waiting list. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. It's just brilliant. Um, the women's group I've popped into. We've yeah. got, you know, a couple of groups that are really, really valuable. Um, far, far, far too many to, you know, to mention in, in, in the little spot that exactly, we have. Exactly, exactly. Like everyone, but, but, you know, hopefully let, let everyone try. Yeah, but, and I think the other important thing is just to say, you know, there's online and in-person groups, so we can, yeah. you know, help yeah. you. Mm -hmm do either and if you do want to do an online group but you have battles figuring out zoom although you're on zoom yep. today can but support you, know, you with that too we can support yep. you with that too so no excuse folks <laughs> there absolutely is no excuse to becoming less isolated sorry we can support all those little <laughs> issues <laughs> thanks sue Okay, so um, we're on to our last speaker now. Um, we've got Nora from Community Connect. Nora, over to you. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen over here as well. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So Community Connect is a free local service that we have for those in Bexley that are looking for any non-health related problems we're here to help you with things such as debt if you've got any stress and anxiety your mental health loneliness we want to work with everyone to try and provide as much support as we can for you when going through any sort of difficulties or a hard time 
So in order to be referred over to Community Connect, you would need to be registered with a BEXI GP and be over the age of 18. So as a wellbeing coordinator, I would contact clients within uh, seven days. We'd sort of, you know, talk through the important things, you know, if you're looking for certain groups or organizations, we'd try to put you in touch with them. You know, we can do referrals on your behalf. We can sort of signpost you if we can't make any referrals and we check through to make sure that you're happy with that and, you know, to try and put you in touch. Um, what would we do is we will first contact you, speak through it a little bit later, and then contact you after a few weeks just to see, you know, how you're getting on and making sure that you've heard from all of the different services. And then we'd also work through by contacting you again after a few months time to see how you are. You might feel that you might want to look at a new service or you felt that you know, you wanted to know more about a different service and we put you in touch with them also. And then after another three months, we contact you again. So we were working alongside individuals for about eight months to try and make sure that you've received all the help that you can and you've been in touch with all of the services that you wanted to. So these are some examples of, you know, the sort of referrals we can do and the different activities that are available. There's different art groups games, community transport, you know, social clubs. It's all about trying to get you to interact and find the right activities for you in the borough at the time, because there's always new things that are coming up. We try to keep in touch with all the different services and make sure you're aware of what's going on. And then these are also some of the different services. So a lot of people quite popular, Age UK, that's a service that we're always referring to. There's things such as counselling matters, um, Mind in Bexley, Bexley Women's Aid, with Age UK as well. There's loads of sort of befriending services and wellbeing centres. So, you know, we're always trying to get people in touch, make sure they've got activities that they can attend to also. And then this is something, you know, that we show to highlight the different support that is available and that we've had for people. So it could be things like helping with food badges, it could be things as, you know, sort of attending new groups different benefits, you know, different carers assessments. It's just all about making sure that individuals are getting all the support that they need and that there may be things that you're not aware of. It could be something as small as wanting to join a sort of music group or an art group and we'd have a look through to make sure that that's something that you have and that's something that you can attend. And it's, it's so simple, you know, to try and find that for you and make sure that you've got all of that that's needed. So here we have uh, Claire Pree. She was a client of ours who had a diagnosis of fibromyalgia alongside anxiety and depression. You know, she was struggling. It can be a really tough time for individuals. You know, if she had pain, she felt really isolated and her children were noticing all the different things that were going on with her. So her GP referred her to Community Connect and we were able to refer her to Mind and Bexley to rebuild her confidence, you know, for counselling. They also had a referral to Healthy Walks, which helped her to meet with people. And then, oh, sorry about that. I've got to come up with it. Let me just go back on. Okay. And then we've helped her to find support groups as well. So she was able to speak with people that have been through similar experiences and had support for that also. So once we had done those referrals, we checked in with her after three weeks and then after a few months again and then six months and you know, it just highlights she was doing much better. She felt happy, you know, and she felt that she was able to meet new friends and, and was doing well in herself. So there's different ways of referring to our service. Um, the first way is through your GP. It's a direct referral that they can make through to us. And then there's also, um, you can contact us on our phone number directly to talk to us about what's been going on and then we can make a referral. There's also a web form and then an email that you can also contact us on if you have any questions or if you wanted to know more about the service. So this is our Twitter page that we have available and then our direct contact number to make any referrals that are needed and our Community Connect Bexley Instagram page so you can keep up to date with the things that we have going on if there 
you know, finding out about new things that are going on in the community. We're able to, you know, highlight and show you what's going on for you to also have a look at. So that is everything that I have today. If you do have any questions, please, you know, put those through. And yeah, thank you. Thanks, Nora. That was brilliant and really good to hear about all, all the um, all the things you can get involved with. And funny you say that there is a question here for you. So um, I'm interested in befriending, but I'm not sure where I will end up. What what sort of organizations are looking for befriending so that roles? Is probably one of the most popular things that we have going on at the moment. We have multiple different sorts of services. We have BBSC, they have a voluntary service. So it's like meeting other people, being able to help out in the community. Uh, we also have BBSC's phone volunteer service. If you felt that you wasn't ready to come out into the community yet, you just wanted to talk to someone over the phone, that's someone we could put you in touch with. Um, especially recovery college is also really popular for different groups, different activities. I know loads of clients have really loved that as well. So there's various different groups, even if you like Scrabble, We've got the local community centres and libraries to put you in touch with. So there's loads there. I think I'll need to join the Scrabble group. <laughs> I'm a bit of a Scrabble demon. <laughs> um, I have another question here for um, Sue. I've chosen something to do at Recovery College and I really don't like it. Not a problem. Worry not, I say, because mm -hmm. it's your choice at the end of the day. You're going to choose exactly what you need for you. So, and just as I said in the beginning, you can try anything, anything you like. If you don't like it, you can choose something else. So, and you can do that yourself. You can go back in onto the website. There's an extra activity form. You can complete that and submit it. Um, or you can always call and speak to your caseworker. You know, we can always call um, and speak to you and update you in what's going on but don't worry about changing anything. If you don't like it, it's almost like a pair of shoes. If it, they don't fit, you're not gonna wear them. You're gonna buy a new pair. Definitely really, try another service, try another activity, workshop or course. Definitely. Not, not a problem. And you know, each time you try something new, you, you learn a little bit more about whether you like it or whether it's not quite right for you. Yeah. So somebody mm -hmm. just popped a note in the chat and said that you know befriending cafes might be a better idea because you have if you have anxiety you may not want to go to a stranger's house and i think uh, nora maybe just on the befriending can can you just yes, give us a little bit of information about how that works because my understanding uh, i do befriending and it's a tele telephone conversation so it's not yes, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to go into a strange environment okay. so there's loads of different sorts of ways to do it there's phone volunteers um like they mentioned about a cafe there's actually quite a few different befriending cafes based in Bexley as well for you to meet with others and to talk through and then they've got the activities that have you know been placed in those same areas too so there's not just um meeting at home it can be on the phone it can be face to face outside so there's quite a few Have we lost Brett? I think she looks like she's frozen. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Oh no. Okay. So um, I'm just reading another question. I was really worried about working alone. Okay. So so a lot of the time befriending isn't that you would go to somebody's house. That's not my understanding because actually they are somebody that you aren't very connected to yet. So it would be quite um, wrong of us really to suggest to have that interaction in somebody's household or even your household actually. So befriending kind of support works that it would be in a place that would be um, somewhere within the community that would be safe uh, for both parties or it might be via a telephone interaction like Nora was saying. Um, last question, because I, I actually am able to see the questions and I believe it might be a question for me. Um, so somebody has asked, what do we do if we're feeling really lonely, but we don't have the confidence to 
go and make them connections and I'm really glad you raised that because I'm very aware that me coming on and doing a talk and saying to you um you know go and make connections do this do that if you don't have the confidence that is really going to hold you back isn't it so like I said previously I think it's really important to take your time and to build up to something like that because like we've all said you know if you do go to an activity and maybe it's not for you um you will learn something about yourself, about other people that might inspire you to do something else. But even before we get to that stage in the activities, maybe it's just having a phone call with one of us, whether you're calling the wellbeing line, whether you're speaking to recovery college when you sign up, maybe if you if you are worried about your wellbeing, you come and see us at the crisis calf, whatever it might be, there are ways that we can help you. And you are not the first person that has felt lacking in confidence or felt that they can't go to these things but we try and work around you and make it as comfortable as we can you know if you say I want to do art club but I don't want to really be with lots of people you know okay well we'll try and put it that you have a table to the side you know and you get on with your work then you never know you can kind of upgrade to joining everyone if you like them it depends doesn't it <laughs> but I'm only messing you will love them um but it, it takes time. So it's just giving yourself that time and recognizing that if you're not feeling confident, the only way usually to raise your confidence is to push yourself out of your comfort zone and it is to do things that make you scared. Um, and that seems really strange, doesn't it? Because why would I do something that scares me? But actually the things that scare you are sometimes the best things for you. A lot of us, you know, are not um, expert public speakers a lot of us get quite frightened a lot of us you know get quite terrified when that live button goes live and we see it in the corner but yet we're here because we know that this helps people but we also know that it helps us that it, it helps us um professionally okay so so that was the last question that i, I read out welcome back Brett. Uh, i'm just sorry i did okay. i did get booted so yes that, right. that moment of terror was definitely <laughs> happening for me um i i thought of just something that i thought we might want to ask you before you go miss laura burke um what other activities do you have scheduled for the rest of mental health awareness week a great question thank you so much for some people asking that because I wasn't actually going to mention it which sounds really strange so I, I really appreciate that so what do we have next so um tomorrow um I'm in Asta all day from about 11 o'clock Asta and Bexar Heath so we're just there promoting the work that we do um highlighting our services so if anyone's local to Bexar Heath and you want to speak to me personally about our services you are more than welcome to I'll give you some of our leaflets um, I'll tell you a bit more about the services and what we can do for you. Um, please let people know. So I'll be in Astabexa Heath um, for about 11 o'clock. So you will see me. I'm, I think I'm 11 to around four. Um, so that's what we're doing tomorrow. And there'll be a variety of staff that are helping me with that. And then Thursday night, we have a board game night, which... Um, I think it's really exciting. I don't know if we've ever done this before, not when I've been working here anyway. So I'm quite excited about this. Um, as it's connection, you know, as it's loneliness, uh, the theme is loneliness and we're all about connection. We thought having a game night would be a really good way of kind of getting people connected and engaged. And I don't know about you, but I love a game. I really love a game. I just think it's such a good thing to do. So if that is something you would like to do and you would like to come along tomorrow, it's from six o'clock to eight o'clock and it's next door to our Mind and Bexy office in our Revival Cafe. So it's directly next door. So you can't miss it. It's a glass building, it says Revival on the top. Um, so pop in, it's from six o'clock to eight o'clock. Um, we'll have Thursday. different- Thursday. Is that Oh, Thursday. 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 Apologies. Thursday. Um, you can tell I'm, I'm doing the lid. Thursday. Thursday from six to eight. You're just um, too excited, Laura. I am. <laughs> honestly, this week is just, yeah, it's flying by, to be honest. Um, but if you would like to attend, please register beforehand, um, just so we know how many people are coming and we need to make sure we've got enough space for you. I've also got snacks, ladies and gentlemen. I've got some snacks, so I need to make sure I've got enough. So please let me know if you are coming. It, uh, if you would like to attend, please email info at mindandbexley.org.uk so that's our email address but you can also find it on our website um, I'll also put it in the chat for you now um, so you have it but if you can just email saying I'd like to attend and that's absolutely fine um, there is people attending already and I know there was somebody on this call today that was anxious about um, attending 
I have your details. I know you're attending. Thank you for that. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on Thursday. So yeah, that's what's going on. Nothing on Friday, unfortunately, but maybe you guys can think of something you could do for yourself on Mental Health Awareness Week. There's my, there's your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Is there mousetrap? Oh, oh that's gracious. such a good quote. I loved that game when I was younger. No, there is not mousetrap, no. I'm sorry to say. Oh, I'm so sorry to do that to you. But I want to say, right, I don't know all of them because someone else has been organising this. But I do know there's Scrabble, Snakes and Ladders, Monopoly. Um, and that's all I know. But I know there's a Peers lot Peers for Pizza. I'm trying to convince them to play Peers for Pizza. And they keep I, saying I've no. I've never heard it's of this It's a good one. Before. It's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> I've never heard of this game before. Trivial Pursuit. Pursuit. I don't know if we've got that either. But if you have any games, please feel free to bring them along. That would be really helpful. But I do know that a staff member had games stacked up. So hopefully there will be some games for you. But if you have games and you would like to bring them, please do. You would be more than welcome to. That's a great idea. OK, everyone. So we're coming up to, to uh, eight o'clock. I think, I think we've covered everything we want to. Um, thank you so much to all of our attendees for coming today. I hope you've learned something new or interesting. Um, and as I said earlier, it will be on YouTube. So do share if, if you think of anyone who might benefit. And uh, Nora, Laura, Sue, again, just thank you so much for your time. It's really great to hear about what you all do. And um, thank you, everyone. Um, hey. it's, Stay well, stay connected, and hopefully we'll see you in a couple of months for another <laughs> webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Brett, Good as night. well for hosting. You've been amazing. Good night. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye.